I'm talking about the gunk, um, which is on Game Pass right now. You can download it right now for Xbox or PC. But should you? Should you download the gunk? Seems like easy enough. Of course you can download it, try it, see if you like it. But there are almost 8 million other games on Game Pass. So let me tell you a little bit about this one and you can decide if it's worth putting a bit of your time into. The Gunk is, I'd say, an exploration-heavy platform game. Uh, it's not a really high-budget title. You're not talking Ratchet and Clank levels of polish here. It's made by a fairly small studio, but then some of the best games are. So in the Gunk, you are landing on an alien planet. Your character and her partner are seemingly deep in debt and needing to scavenge and survive. This planet that you've landed on is fairly desolate, but for some pulsating, dark, grisly looking gunk, hence the title. Very early on in the game, you learn that this gunk is seemingly parasitic or otherwise suppressing the life on this planet. Um, as your character hoovers it all up with your power glove, that's nothing to do with the old 80s Nintendo device, but it's called a power glove apparently. You hoover up this gunk, and if you clear the gunk in a little sectioned off area, suddenly the planet springs to life in a nice little glow of energy. And these little glows of energy, this is definitely where the game looks its best. So I'll just talk briefly about how it does look, being, a, like I said, a relatively small team that's made this. Um, when you first drop onto this planet, and it is in its desolate state, um, it doesn't look particularly good. The rocks and general texture work throughout the game is, I'd say, an area of weakness. But as you progress through the game and you start coming across luminescent plants and crystals and generally restoring life to the planet, um, getting all this foliage back, all these plants, it starts to look a lot better. That's when the game looks its best. Um, you'll also notice that the, the characters' animations are pretty stiff and rigid, but I do think that is by design. I think it's supposed to be part of the charm. But anyway, it's, it's not a game that's going to push your console to its limits, so don't go into it expecting a visual showcase as such. But it's not ugly either. Where the game has a what I would consider a fairly significant weakness is in the audio. Uh, the soundtrack that plays through it is dreary and forgettable. I, I can't remember a thing about it except that it was slightly annoying and didn't set any kind of mood or atmosphere. So the game would be significantly improved if it had a better soundtrack going on. The, the dialogue between the two characters and there's a robot. Um, I'll refer to the robot as Claptrap, but without the clap or the trap, I don't really know what the robot does. It just kind of ambles about not doing very much. But uh, the main character and her partner have a little back and forth. That's where the kind of exposition for the characters and for the planet itself comes from. It's passable. Never laugh out loud funny. Never dramatic as far as I can tell. Still early in the game, but not dramatic so far. Uh, it consists of lots of jokes about being hungry. They do swear, which was a surprise, a bit like um, watching a Toy Story movie and having this one toy from Father Ted sitting in the corner shouting Fuck arse! Fuck! So I guess that's something to consider if you were thinking this is a game for, for small children. And it is a slightly strange choice because the game is otherwise pretty well suited for any age group. So at its core in this game, uh, I already mentioned that you land on this desolate planet, suck up gun can bring life back to the planet, and that is the loop that runs through the game as far as I've played. So you suck up the gunk, you restore life to the planet, you use that life to travel to a new area. There are uh, additional, it looks like at least there are additional traversal and puzzle solving mechanics that you'll, you'll earn throughout the game. But at the point that I've played to, there's pretty much one type of puzzle and that's uh, you collect an orb from a plant and you have to transport it to a particular magic puddle to grow a big mushroom to climb on, of course. The puzzle element of that is that you can't jump or traverse particularly well while you're carrying this orb, so you have to throw it around the environment and figure out the best way to get it from point A to point B in order to progress to the next area and clear some more gunk to unlock the next puzzle, which will unlock the next area of gunk to clear to unlock the next puzzle, and so on, and that's the game. The world that you explore is designed so that uh, it loops back on itself quite a lot. So each path that you explore, clearing gunk, solving puzzles, when you get to the objective, which might be an item to give you a new traversal ability or something like that. But each time you get to the end of a path, 
there's a short route back to where you need to be. So it all looks around quite nicely. The world and the level design is good in that sense. But you'll notice that I didn't mention anything about any combat or tension whatsoever. And that's quite a critical thing to be aware of if you're getting into this game. There is no combat. There are, I've encountered a couple of little critters near the gunk, but you handle them the same as you do the static gunk. You suck them up with your glove and you throw them and that's it. They're cleared out of the way. And it's just part of clearing the gunk and bringing life to the planet. So I'll tell you, for me personally, I got bored of the loop within about an hour. I'm told that this is quite a short game and you can probably clear it in about six hours, but you need to be in a particular mood. I've heard a lot of people say that it's a, it's a great game to use to wind down after some more frenetic gameplay in the likes of Halo Infinite or something more action oriented. So I don't know, maybe if you're feeling fairly stressed and you just want to sit back, put your feet up, explore and have a relaxing time, then the gunk is there for you. If you are thinking this is going to be a game to, to challenge your reflexes or, I don't know, tell you a compelling story, anything like that, don't think you'll find it here. So that's kind of the takeaway from this video, really. If you're looking to play the gunk, know what you're getting into. It's relaxing. I would say kind of boring. But it is reasonably accomplished. And if you're looking for a relaxing, boring game, it's right there. Go download it. Give it a play. Oh, I will also say if you're an achievement hunter, yeah, have at it. Feel good about yourself. It throws points at you fairly early on, fairly consistently. So yeah, go rack up that gamer score if you care for such things. And that's it. That's all I have to say about the gunk right now. So thanks for sticking with it to this point. As always, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you think that I'm missing key components of the gunk, if I'm doing it a disservice, if I just need to play further to get to the good stuff, then let me know, just comment. I would personally love to hear some differing opinions and anybody that is here trying to get serious insight into this game will probably appreciate it as well. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.